Hey, it's Chris again. Uh, we have a new video. This one is a fairly quick video. It's about uh, an iPhone that's been dropped in the, somewhere in Greece into the sea. So obviously salt water damaged the phone. Uh, the phone wasn't booting. It was pretty badly corroded. I had to go through just on the cleaner. Um, there was a lot of shorts we had to clear out. Uh, there was also, once those were cleared out, the phone was booting up, but we had no display. So the next step was also to replace Chestnut, which is the U4000, which is a chip responsible for the display. So once we replaced that, the phone booted right, right up and we actually had uh, touch. So uh, if there was no touch, there was obviously another problem with another chip. Uh, but luckily in this case, uh, that was the only problem near the end. So um, we were able to recover the data. The customer is fairly happy. Um, he got his data. So anyways, let's get on and uh, let's look at the board under the microscope. So here's the board. Um, here, down here by connectors, it doesn't look so bad. Um, when you actually look at the, um, there's these capacitors here that that are uh, pretty bad shape. Let me just adjust it here. Yeah, and there was uh, one missing here, but it's, it wasn't a big deal really. I checked the uh, ZXW2, and that wasn't a problem. But um, you can clearly see that the corrosion was fairly bad, even even in the areas that is not very bad. Like the, this one here is loose. Uh, I should have probably kicked it off. Uh, let's keep going here. Here everything is okay. I wasn't worried about this too much uh, here by this by the CPU. Uh, let's move down here. Anything on this area? Anything uh, here in the lower portion of the board? Uh, that wasn't a big deal. Um, Everything here looked okay, but when you actually flip it over, this is um, the bulk of the problem was. So this, um, this is the first thing I've, I've noticed. All these capacitors and, and, and these other components here, they're fairly bad shape, all this stuff here. Um, I've checked for continuity. These, these ones actually were not shorted out. Um, this is the... Um, this is the chip here that I replaced. One right here. This, this is a U4000. This is a chestnut. This is responsible for the display. And the capacitor that I noticed that was shorted out initially uh, was a big one right here. So when I removed this capacitor and I tested for continuity on these two pads, um, there was definitely a short. So um, the only logical solution was to lift this, uh, this IC right here. And that cleared their short, and uh, I'm going to show it later on the, the ZXW2 why I thought that was the only problem. There was a few more shorts here. I removed these ones. Um, these capacitors were shorted out, so we removed them. That cleared another short. Uh, let's keep going here. And this board's already been through ultrasonic cleaner at this point, so um, it actually looked a lot worse than it does now. Um, everything else here, all these, all these ones here don't matter. Um, they're, they're not responsible for, for the device to boot, so um, didn't, I wasn't too concerned with this. But uh, yeah, uh, fairly simple job once you figure out the problem. The problem is, but um, unfortunately, iPhones are encrypted, so we do have to repair them uh, in order to pull data off. I wish there was an easier way, but there isn't. Um, so let's go over to ZXW, and we're going to show you um, where exactly the issue was. Okay, so here we have the uh, board view in Zillion X Works. Um, so the initial problem was, as I mentioned before, there was a short somewhere else um, on the board, and the, the board just, it was as soon as you plug it into DC power supply, it was uh, drawing too much current, uh, should be at zero. Um, so, so clear that short after cleaning, obviously. And the next thing I've noticed, there was a short to ground here on C400. Seven, which is a capacitor. Um, so looking at this board view, I've noticed that um, there was nowhere else to get a short other than this chip. But I removed the capacitor anyways because it was a very bad shape. And when I checked for continuity here, um, the uh, the short was still there. So the only explanation left for this was this chip, which was a, a chestnut, which is like I said, display chip. So we took that off. Um, and of course, the phone booted up at this point, but there was no display. Uh, so I replaced this chip and the phone booted up, and that was the adjust of the repair. I'm surprised this phone still works because just looking at the board itself, 
the phone is in very bad shape. I mean, salt water, even though it's better to be in a salt water than regular water because it shorts it out quickly, it's still, um, if, if left for too long inside the phone, obviously it will create a lot of problems. So, um, anyway, this is another successful job. So there we go, the phone boots. Um, it's almost done booting here because it's dropping to zero. The current is dropping to zero. So, uh, we're almost done here. And here's the thing. Okay, Let's see if touch works. Yep. Touch ID not working, that's pretty standard, but uh, here's the phone fully, fully functioning. So that's it for that case. I mean, it's a good thing that uh, we keep parts in stock. This is a U4000. Uh, we always have these parts in stock because uh, with water damage, um, chestnut will go for sure. I'm sure other parts go as well, but um, the most common parts we, we try to keep in stock because uh, there's nothing worse than ordering parts. Uh, so anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, please stay tuned for more videos.